Today is uh, Tuesday, May 7th, 2019, and I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Tennessee State Board of Accountancy. This regularly scheduled meeting is taking place in room 1A of the Davy Crockett Tower at 500 James Robertson Parkway in Nashville, Tennessee. The meeting date, time, and location have been properly noticed and copies of the agenda were posted to the Board of Accountancy website on May 1st, 2019. Uh, Wendy, would you do a roll call vote to make sure that we have a quorum here? Yes. Uh, Casey Stewart? Here. Gay Moon? Here. Andy Bonner? Here. Janet Booker Davis? Here. Pamela Church? Here. Larry Elmore? Here. Kevin Monroe? Here. Trey Watkins? Here. Judy Weatherby? Here. And I understand Stephen Eldridge will not be joining us today, and Gabe Roberts will be here shortly, and we can um, add to the record when he joins us. And we okay. have a quorum. All right. Thank you. Um, we're going to wait until July to have officer elections, and the, the main reason is we've got uh, four spots that are up for appointment or reappointment. And I, I can remember, um, it was the first or second year I was on the state board, we uh, elected officers at our um, May meeting and the people we elected didn't get reappointed. So, uh, you know, we'll uh, try to avoid that by having the elections in July. So if you have any thoughts, anybody wants to, to express any interest or make any campaign speeches, why well, that gives you plenty of time to, to do what you need to do. So um, I'd like to remind everyone to speak into the microphones uh, today so that we can have a proper recording of your comments. I think everybody has been furnished a copy of the agenda and had a chance to review that. Are there any um, additions or deletions to that agenda. Okay, hearing none, I would entertain a motion that we approve the agenda as presented. So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second. Is there <clears throat> any discussion? <clears throat> All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, with the next item on our agenda is approval of the minutes of the uh, January 29th, uh, 2019 regular <laughs> meeting. I notice we have a, a, a paper copy of the minutes on our uh, at our spaces this morning. Were there <coughs> some corrections that were changes that were made to what we were previously furnished? Uh, yes, on page three of the minutes uh, where uh, Janet Booker Davis discusses her her um, service on the examination review board, ask that we make some changes to the wording there. Uh, some of it was inaccurate and, and some just needed to be clarified. So we revised that paragraph. Uh, I think it's the second paragraph on that page and I believe Janet, you're okay with the changes. Yes. Good with the new language. Yes. Dinner, okay. Then um, I will entertain a motion. We approve the minutes as um, with the changes as presented to us in paper form this morning. So moved. Have a second. Second. Is there any further discussion of the minutes? All in favor of <coughs> approving the minutes as presented this morning, uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, uh, that takes us to the uh, director's report. And Wendy, would you like to offer up some comments on your written report that was in our materials? Sure. Um, so at the top of the director's report, you'll see future meeting dates. Um, we have one to approve, one new one to approve, which is Tuesday, July 28th, 2020. Um, I underlined the Thursday meeting because that's going to fall on a Thursday rather than our typical Monday, Tuesday. Uh, we had some difficulty in rooms, finding rooms that would accommodate us. Uh, we wanted something after the 15th in October, but um, not to coincide with the uh, uh, NASPA's annual meeting, so we, we, ha we didn't have very many dates to choose from. <clears throat> Unfortunately, it does look like Andy and Judy are going to have some conflicts with their service on some NASPA committees, 
but we are hopeful that they'll be able to call in um, to one or both of those meetings. So if you all, as you make your arrangements, if you need any additional information from me on timing and, and that kind of thing, just let me know. Um, <clears throat> the next se section is just uh, NASBA meetings. Uh, as I mentioned yesterday, um, I attended along with Sherry and our legal counsel, Maria and Stuart, the NASBA executive director and legal conference in March. And there's, um, I've listed some of the topics that we talked about at that meeting. So it's always good to get together with uh, our counterparts across the country. We also spent some time with uh, executive directors or CEOs from state societies uh, were there from, from a few states. So we had an opportunity <coughs> to visit with them as well. Um, upcoming NASBA meetings, the Eastern Regional meeting, I noted the f individuals there that have been approved to attend. So hopefully you all have major reservations and are planning to attend that meeting. Um, the Western Regional is listed there. We don't have anyone attending that one, but it is a duplicate of the Eastern Regional. And then the annual meeting is in Boston <coughs> in late October. Andy will be attending. Judy's on the list. Um, if anyone else would like to attend, uh, please let me know and I will add you to the list. Uh, exam fees, uh, every once in a while we get an update that the exam fees have been updated. I've attached to the director's report the most recent um, update to those fees uh, for this year, 2020 and 2021. It looks like the only change is going to be on the prometric side and, a, and the total increase per test section is going to be $1.59. Also, with regards to the exam, the AICPA has announced the winners of their 2018 Elijah Watts Sells Award. We had two winners in Tennessee. Um, the the <coughs> award goes to candidates who have obtained a cumulative average of 95.5 across all four sections of the exam, passed all four sections of the exam on their first attempt, and completed testing in 2018. There were nearly 86,000 individuals that sat for the exam in 2018, and 110 candidates met the requirements for this award. We did have two, can two winners in Tennessee. Ms. Catherine Griesmeer is a graduate of Lee University with a bachelor's in accounting and finance and is employed with Unity Dance Troupe in Cleveland, Tennessee. Corey Lockridge a graduate of Vanderbilt University with a Bachelor of Arts in Math and Economics and a Master's of Accountancy is employed with PwC in Atlanta. So <clears throat> congratulations to those two. Wendy, do we need to note that Gabe Roberts has now joined the meeting? I think you had a traffic delay or something. I did. I apologize That's for being late. Right. We will let the record show that Gabe has, attend has joined the meeting. <laughs> Deal. Uh, the CPA Evolution Working Group, I, as a part of the process of looking into the future of the profession, last fall the CPA Evolution Working Group was created. It was formed uh, as a joint venture between NASBA and the AICPA to explore changes in licensure and what the future of the profession would look like, might look like, due to significant technology um, changes in the profession. This group has met, I believe, four times, and they have come up with some guiding principles, and we will hear a full report at the regional meetings, so I think this will be an interesting meeting to hear the feedback from this group and, and how we might move forward as a profession <coughs> and whether they recommend any specific changes to a licensure model going forward. Uh, renewals, there's just an update here on renewals for those individuals due to renew 1231-18. Um, we have still 295 individuals that are in expired or delinquent status for their CPA license, and then we have 46 firms also in a delinquent status. 20, just to let you know, 28 of those 295 are unable to renew due to lack of CPE or PPT hold. So the board was very specific in wanting us to hold those where individuals had indicated that they had not completed their continuing education. So we've reached out to them one or more times 
explaining that we would need some sort of attestation that they had completed their CPE before we could renew the license. So I did look, 25 of those are CPE related, three are professional privilege tax related. <clears throat> Um, with regard to the CPE audit for this year, we will be mailing notices on May 15th. Any board member that renewed in 2018 will also be subject to audit, so be looking for those uh, notices. We do plan to audit roughly 540 licensees, and this represents 10% of the population um, as required by board policy to audit. Um, the new CPE audit tool went active last week. You all should have received an email with information on creating your account and logging in. So we'll talk about that a little bit more at the end of the agenda. I'd just like to see if anybody had a chance to log in. Um, TSCPA is um, feeding their attendance records to this new platform. So individuals who take their continuing education there will automatically see those courses listed there. So that's a, a good step forward and maybe a paperless process. That'll, that'll still be a while, but it'll be nice. The, the, the basic benefit of this tool is to track, for all individual licensees to track their CPE. And the real benefit is at audit time, especially for the data being fed over by TSCPA. Um, let's say somebody took all of their CPE from the society then everything would be there. They would have to do nothing but log in and click submit to board. Um, you know, they could log in, make sure they've met all the requirements and submit to board. So ideally that's the way it would all be for everybody. And at some point, NASBA will be allowing other sponsors to feed their records in as well. Um, but this is, we're starting slow and, and seeing how it works so far. So I wanted everybody to keep in mind that um, our, our renewal system, when you renew your license, doesn't talk to the audit tool. So when you go in and renew your license, it doesn't know what you've done over here in the tracker. It's a, a completely different platform. So when you go through the automation of renewing your license, it can't go check to see if your CPE's all loaded in the tracker. So um, that's one, we've had some questions related to that. Um, so meaning when we sent the notice out, that individuals would need to be submitting a listing of their CPE. We have a lot of questions about, well, it's all in the tracker. Well, the problem with that is when you renew your license, it doesn't talk to the tracker. So if they have everything in the tracker, all they need to do is simply go in and download a PDF of their CPE and upload that during the renewal process. So it should not be too difficult, but that has been a, a question we've had. Uh, CPE reporting requirements, as I just mentioned, that notice was sent out on February 13th. We will also include it in our upcoming newsletter that we're working on. Uh, just an update on the state-specific ethics course. We have approved five uh, providers for 2019 so far. Um, you all, I sent the course evaluations that TSCPA provided. I sent those to you in an email earlier this year. And um, it was, there were some really good comments in there. So I think Casey and I had briefly talked about it, that we were impressed with the comments. And I think it shows that the decision that was made was so far was a good one. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the things we ran into was in the sponsor application, we required the sponsors to stop offering the course on July thir or January 31st of 2019. Well, TSCPA isn't required in their agreement to provide updated content until sometime in the first quarter. So we had a lapse there of a couple of months where we didn't really have a course available. And you don't think very many people take CPE during, um, during tax season. However, we do have people that did not meet the requirements by the end of the year and still needed to get that course. And then we also have some people that are trying to comply with a consent order and need to take that course. So we need to make sure there's a course available 24-7, 365 days a year. So we have made changes to the sponsor application to allow them to be able to provide the course until new content is available from the TSCPA so that we don't run into this 
issue going advise everybody of that. Uh, TSCPA activities, um, I attended the <coughs> legislative reception in February and the Elk Valley chapter meeting. Uh, um, oh, that's the wrong date. Um, I think that was April 25th that I attended the Elk Valley chapter meeting and gave a brief update. And then just tip typical uh, statistics, new licenses issued. We are slightly down in quarter one, but I have a feeling quarter two is going to be above the prior couple of years. We've been busy lately on um, new licenses. And then the last page there has a uh, total license count. And we still have more licensees, more active licensees in March of 19 than we did in 18. So that's always a good uh, benchmark to look at. If there are any questions, I will be happy to entertain those. I don't have any questions or anything. I'd, I'd just like to come in. I'm, I'm happy that, Pam, this will be your first NASBA meeting that you're yeah. attending, and, yes, and I'm glad to see you do that. And just to kind of reiterate, I think what Andy said yesterday, I would, or somebody, maybe it was Judy, that um, those NASBA meetings are really informative and good. And for those of you who have not had a chance to go before, I would really encourage you to try to make at least one meeting in the future just to get a better feel for what NASBA does and glad you're going Pam thank you I've taught every summer since I joined the board and I'm not teaching this summer so All right. great <laughs> good, opportunity good deal um, any questions or comments for Wendy on her report I got one question just on um, when the TSCPA uploads that information, do we know, if, for example, I report in 2019, will they upload 2018 and 19, or are they just upload in 19? Karen is indicating that January of 19 going forward is being loaded. Okay. I just had a question on the CPE audit. Um, are we, is there a way we're going to somehow um, be able to run some kind of quantitative analysis against that database for Tennessee to be able to, I mean, I don't see why we can't at some point when the, when the work is done, the programming is done or whatever, why we intent, can't audit? The intent, I think, is for us to use that to pinpoint audit. Yeah. I mean, we ought to be able to run all Tennessee licensees and see you know, <clears throat> anyone who has less than what they're supposed to have. And so, so right now, the audit tool is um, is not mandatory. So oh. um, if the board wants to consider that in the future, I, I would caution that let well, they just launched it. Yep, yep. We're just doing an audit. So I would like to be able to give you feedback on feedback we get from licensees, f feedback on how our audit goes this year before we talk, get okay. too into the, into. but right now it's not mandatory that licensees use it. Um, you could consider that in the future that if you're selected for audit, it's mandatory or. Well, I just, I know that we had a 49% fail rate. 29. Oh, okay, sorry about that. Okay, we had a huge fail rate for only testing 10 percent and that to me that is an area where this board needs to make sure the public is protected if these people aren't getting their CPE that that to me is a big problem that's one of the bigger things since I've been on the board that has I, where I've had concern is <clears throat> CPA signing saying they've completed their CPE and they have not I mean that's a huge fail rate. Well, and that's the intent of them submitting the coursework yeah. going forward when they start doing the, the licensing renewal because it'll be a little more difficult to yeah. just check a box and as opposed to saying, yeah. hey, I took these. Let's I mean, see how. At that how point, it, you've, you've stepped across a line, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah. It's no longer a, hey, I. Let's see how this one goes. And, I, and in <clears> July, <throat> I should be able, we should be un, enough along that we'll be able to give you some good stats in July 
about the results of this audit. Good. Okay. Um, that would I be hope, great. I think the deadline will be June 30 for them to submit, and um, our meeting's not till the end of July. So I think Leanne <clears> we should be able to get through most of them by then, and we'll have some good stats so you all can compare this year to to the la to last I'm, year. I'm eager to see the the results. I'm guessing it will probably have a similar fail rate if I had to guess, or it will be within a margin of error just because we really haven't done anything differently than in the prior years, right? Well, we have, we've done one thing differently, is we are not letting people complete their renewal. Okay. If they, uh, if they are being truthful and saying, I have not completed my CPE. Right. So we have 25 people that are waiting, um, and they're gonna expire the end of June if they don't submit something to us indicating they've completed their CPE. And in the past, um, we've renewed their license and then we've added them to the audit list, is basically what we've done. Any other questions or comments for Wendy? <clears throat> okay, next on our agenda is uh, NASBA updates and. Um, Mr. Chairman, we do need to vote on the next meeting date. Okay. And uh, I'm going to have to go back to that. <laughs> Let me ask before we do that, was the meeting date on Thursday, October 24th, was that a change or has that date already been approved? It's already been approved. Okay, so the only thing we need to do, we need a motion to approve uh, the future meeting date on Tuesday, July the 28th. 2020. Would somebody like to make a motion? Make a motion to approve the uh, July 28, 2020 proposed date. Okay. Second to that motion? Second. Okay, got a motion and a second. Any discussion of the motion? <coughs> Hearing none, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, is there anything else now, Wendy, that I've forgotten? down to the NASBA updates and I guess Andy you're they haven't kicked you off the board yet have they, they haven't kicked me off the board yet <laughs> all right you want to give us an update I will we'll do we met out in San Francisco and um, at that board meeting we approved a change to the Uniform Accountancy Act model rule and specifically related to the CPA uh, examination window testing um, so that we can go ahead and implement that change right now they're anticipating that that change will happen in July 2020 so um, we, of course, we we've got ours on the agenda today. Uh, the second thing that we uh, that we did was we approved the exposure for comment and, and amended the statement of standards for continuing professional education programs, uh, the fields of study, and so um, the CPE committee hopes to have the documents ready for the board of directors approval in October of 2019. Um, we uh, we. We went through the regional meeting and uh, we set the agendas. One of the most interesting things was is that we put the 120 and 150 uh, task force communication um, on a uh, the day that we're going to have the breakouts for regionals, and then we also uh, uh, put the CPA evolution working group right after that, so that when we do have the breakout at the meetings, you're going to get a pretty exciting discussion if it's anything like our board meeting uh, we we had a lot of discussion in that area we went over the proposed uh, draft of the guiding principles and talked about them and so um, I think you're gonna see a lot of new stuff in that area from those two committees when we get to Washington DC so uh, it's gonna be extremely informative in that area um, we also uh, got an update from um, Dick Carroll on the uh, the executive directors conference in March, and they said that they had an outstanding time. They had a uh, a record number of uh, of executives coming to that conference, and uh, based on everything uh, that Dick told us, that it was probably one of the most successful they've had. So they they were very encouraged by about the input and the feedback going on across all the uh, boards. Um, we also um, Got some interesting talk about um, the anti-regulation bills that are going on. There were 43 of them across the United States that were proposed. 
Um, the uh, one of the most interesting ones was in New Mexico that um, it, the second chance bill. If if you actually killed somebody, and it was not in the performing of their tax return or audit services, you could still get a license. <laughs> Which we were like, what? <laughs> so. Um, uh, that one was interesting. And also, uh, Colorado may become the first state to allow Siemens CGMA uh, to actually hold credentials in their state. They, are, they were in the process of doing that. We got to update that at the um, um, board meeting and probably we'll have some final information uh, when we get to the regionals. Um, one of the big topics was is that, you know, we, we were talking about this whole area about uh, continuing education and um, you got the CPA evolution and and what you really take uh, in education to sit for the CPA exam and uh, there was a lot of comment about that we're not going to recognize our profession in five years that things are changing that fast and um, one of the um, Maria Caldwell uh, out of Florida gave an example that uh, a firm was working with uh, IBM and that IBM actually had the Watson computer that was um, uh, that was being set up to read the FASBs and use AI to apply it to uh, financial statements and footnotes. So the purpose of the program was to uh, actually on day one generate financial statements, footnotes, and uh, then the 10Ks and 10Qs that go along with it on day one close. And so, you know, that, that they were working towards that. And, and then, of course, a lot of questions about what we're doing and uh, the assurance work on that and, and who would do it. And, you know, so that there's a lot of things going on in, in just a, the profession uh, that are, that are going to change. And I think that everybody needs to have input. And I'm glad that we're taking this many members of our board to uh, the annual meetings and, and to the regional meetings because there's, there's a lot of input that we need to have. And so I just... Uh, Can I comment on that? Yes, I'm sir. on the advisory board at the University of Memphis for the accounting school. And part of the conversations we've been having is that, unfortunately, the education system is driven by the CPA exam. And so, but that's not necessarily what the profession needs at this point because of all the data analytics and all the other things that go with it. And the, the need to upgrade our education system, the problem we've got is unfortunately the exam in a lot of regards is hindering the direction of education. So I, I'm glad to hear y'all say y'all are talking about all that because I think that is a huge problem right now as far as turning out students that we in the profession need or industry needs to do their jobs. And so uh, I never thought I'd hear myself say that, but I do think the exam is kind of harming the development of education at this point. Uh, I think the exam has gotten the message and it's going to change and maybe um, from what my eyes see, maybe uh, encourage education to change quicker. I've got to jump in, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking to see when you were. I was having a conversation yesterday with Casey. The other problem is we can't let the exam nor the technology drive all of the education. Because when I talk to, and many of you are in this category, when I talk to people hiring the students, they say, we've got to have students who can think, who can write, who can <coughs> act ethically. Um, and we're losing that. We're particularly losing that at the master's level because the students are so focused on that CPA exam. That's all they care about. And they know enough to realize that they do need more Excel, et cetera. And so they would tolerate that intrusion on their preparing for the CPA exam. But to ask them to write a paper is met with <laughs> real resistance more so than before because it's like that's not, that's not the CPA exam. And I hate that the CPA exam is, you know, we, we say we're introducing those things to CPA exam, we're testing writing, et cetera. But the education's <laughs> got to include that. So. It's it's a huge problem, I think, and I and I think the boards need to think about repercussions of, of <coughs> decisions and send messages accordingly. I'm excited you're going to regional because I think you're going to see that they're considering that. <laughs> okay. Good. And they they're talking about it, and the CPA evolution <laughs> work group is really bringing that forward. They they you're going to be excited when you hear I think the results if it's the same as that they shared with us at, 
at the board of directors. And if, if Pam gets involved in the discussion, they might find something for her to do. <laughs> they they will find something, and that's very encouraging because you're very talented. Thank you. Andy, I think there's this uh, the quote from uh, the G, former GE CEO that says, when things are changing more rapidly on the outside of the organization than when they're changing on the inside, you need to beware because the end is near. And I think that's kind of the situation we're headed toward here. <laughs> a lot of stuff going on and a lot of information to gather, and I'm, I'm excited about our regional meeting. I think we're going to get a lot of good stuff um, because it, uh, some of the information we were talking about, we, it was just board ears only, but uh, I'm encouraged with, what the, with the track that they're going down. <clears throat> and that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. All right. I, one, one, I had a couple questions for some things you said. You said, <coughs> what did you say about Colorado recognizing CGMA? What, it, what does that mean? The, um, in, in the standard Uniform Accountancy Act, uh, anything that has accounting in it, uh, you can't hold yourself out. So in other words, if you have CGMA uh, a now CGMA counts. holder and they're in management, they would not be able to put that on their card. Uh, it would not, uh, they would not be able to use that designation. Colorado has determined that if they're not holding themselves out to the public, that they're actually obtaining this certificate to use in management, that that um, then they should be able should uh, be allowed to use the designation. Now, if they if they decide that they're going to go into public accounting, use the designation, then they would fall under the discretion of the uh, of the board in Colorado. Is the way I understood it. And so they were, they were in the process of writing that. There were some <laughs> snafus, um, uh, and NASPA got involved to help them. Um, actually change the language a little bit to, so that they could have that designation and uh, it had not passed yet so I, I expect that we're going to get an update on that at our either the regional meeting or our next board meeting second part I, I did want to revisit what Gabe had talked about yesterday on the phone about Mississippi because I mean that that has some implications for people in my firm uh, and I do want to ask that it, I don't know what the role of NASBA is in something like that, and I guess that's my real big question is when someone's doing something that perceives or that we perceive that is regressing uh, potentially away from, uh, you know, full reciprocity in all these states and having uniformity, does NASBA jump in and reach out to those boards and say, hey, we noticed you're doing this. Can we get some clarification on this, you know? bring up some of the issues maybe that go along with that i mean i obviously can't tell the board what to do i'm just curious what their role is in that process in the process of being a cpa uh, naspa has actually brought together <clears throat> all the jurisdictions there's 54 of us and in the process they've tried to standardize standardize the language so when we talk about the uniform accountancy act what we're doing is we're talking about this is what we recommend that each state have. So there's a uniformity across the United States. Uh, what NASPA does is that, of course, not everybody sees it that way, just like when we bring the Uniform Accountancy Act in here and our attorneys have a different opinion than other attorneys, we change it a little bit. So what NASPA does is they come in and work with that state uh, to, to help uh, with their rules when they want to make changes to it. So we, we have access, Wendy has access to NASBA to say, hey, what are these states doing? We get poll questions, say, how do you treat this or how do you treat that? And um, so they, they try to help us unite to where we're, the accounting profession is pretty close to the same across all the jurisdictions. With that said, uh, in the process, they also have helped us create a, a licensing board, ALD. Uh, which allows us to actually then track discipline issues across the different 54 jurisdictions and the government and everything that we see here from a legal standpoint. And what that does is um, that's created a database that's only second to the nursing profession. No other profession has that. We do. So we, we're pretty standardized, and, we, and with their leadership, we've been able to, uh, to cut costs because they help us with communications, of when things go on, they help us when any regulation comes out, and they say, "Hey, this is happening in this state. You need to have a heads up on what's going on." Uh, if we have an issue, uh, or any jurisdiction has an issue, they they literally put people in planes and go down and help say, "No, this is not how the UAA was intended," 
And this is a reason why, you know, this anti-regulation doesn't need to exist. But in this specific situation, would they do that? Do they get on planes and go down to Mississippi and say, they hey? Would, if, if, if Andy Wright called from Mississippi, they'd jump on the plane and they'd head down there. I'm talking about, we're talking about people we know that are being affected by their rules that are not, we're not doing the same things to them. Well, I, I don't know everything associated with it, with what they're doing, because, it, you know, if, if somebody's, you know, in the state and living there, but they're actually working and, and they're licensed in another state, you know, I don't know how Mississippi's rules read. Uh, and so I, I you know, I'm. Yeah, so again, as I said yesterday, I'm talking about a specific instance of someone who isn't working in the accounting profession and isn't holding themselves out in the accounting profession, but has a license or and they don't even be active anymore in Tennessee. And because of that, they're getting a letter that they need to register or become a license in the state. But so, I, I, here again, I, I don't know everything associated with it, but I think number one, they definitely could reach out to NASP and say, hey, help me with this and help me understand why they're writing the letter and NASP would immediately help them. I mean, they, you know, they, they would our board and our representatives take that to NASM and say, hey, we're hearing this. Yes. Can you please go look at this and see what's going on? We can actually take it to them. And then we, we also can, if we, if we think that somebody's actually holding <laughs> themselves out and they don't have a license here or they're using that license in the state of Tennessee to better them in some other profession and they're publicly disclosing it, then we could go to NASM and say, hey, help us write a rule that would help us stop these people from taking advantage of the of a uh, of, of a certificate when they don't have a reciprocal in the state of Tennessee, and I think that definitely works the other way too. I I, I know that everything I've been involved with, uh, they're for the betterment of the profession, and if, if they think that that something's not being done correctly there, they would definitely um, have a voice and, and would help us. When all we'd have to do is have Wendy get in touch with them and say, "Hey, we've got you know some issues here. Please advise us on what's going on." Because I, I just don't know what the letter said or, well, I don't either. or what they were at. Because like, their laws are a little bit different than ours. But that's where I feel like NASBA can be a benefit to the profession because they are the ones reaching across all <laughs> jurisdictions to get uniformity. And just when an issue like this comes up, it seems like we'd want to notify them, hey, we're having an issue. Hey, one of the, uh, I mean, I think one of the big things NASBA does is like at these conferences, they have breakout sessions by region and right. and like all the Southeast meets as one group. But um, almost always in those breakout sessions, uh, the uh, board members or executive directors are there, have an opportunity to explain what's going on in their states right. and things they're doing. And what I've, I mean, what I've seen is like, um, Alabama, in particular, has tried to um, rewrite some of their rules and standards so they're more in compliance with the Uniform Accountancy Act. And you hear that from other right. people, but um, you know, it's a, it's a forum where you know if you can talk about differences or things you're about to do that's going to create differences, it, it gets comments from others in the group uh, all i'm asking is that we bring it up somebody yeah. bring it up i don't know if it's yeah. wendy i don't know if it's y'all when y'all's positions on nasba or what just that if we're hearing something like this i feel like it's incumbent on this board to inquire as to what's That's going something on something you ought to take to these bro next breakout session yeah. you have yeah, and, well, we're the, and mississippi will be in our breakout yeah, so, yeah. Um, and assuming, he goes to the, assuming he's at the eastern regional i think he went to western last year but we can certainly bring it up, and, and what I'm hearing is just a concern that this letter they sent out is affecting licensees in Tennessee, um, and, and we've heard it in the office as well um, a, a handful of times, uh, some concern about why they're being asked to do this, um, or would we discipline them in Tennessee if they don't comply with what they're being asked to do in Mississippi? It's just and, ambiguity, and so it's like... How do we deal with that ambiguity? We can, I think, certainly let them know of our concerns. Obviously, we can't force them to change. Can't tell them what, what to do, but what we can to raise do, the issue. But we can certainly state our concerns. And this board in the state of Tennessee is fortunate in that the Southeast is represented by Andy Bonner on our board. Mm -hmm. So he will be kind of heading up that regional meeting. Andy, who's the person in NASPA that those folks should reach out to? If the um, individual people I'm, want to reach out to somebody. Right now, I'm going to say that um, what I'll do is I'll actually get in touch with NASPA and I'll ask.
Okay. And and I'll actually call Andy and ask. Uh, and then our next meeting, I'll I'll give you an update. Okay. I want to find you. out. <clears throat> okay, um, Andy. I guess that concludes your comments. But we have some other members on NASBA committees. Um, sure. Anything going on with your committee? Yes, I'm on the administration and finance committee, and we met also in San Francisco. Um, I guess the big takeaways from that from that gathering were that uh, the number of licensees are still down. Um, they had anticipated that it would start going up by now. I, th I think that these are applicants for the exam. Oh, yeah, correct? sorry, sorry, yes. yeah, yeah, applicants for the exam. Um, and so I think they're hoping that that's going to improve, but that is affecting uh, the budget a bit. Um, in addition, the budget has been affected by the change in the IT. That they've outsourced IT versus having internal employees, and uh, that continues to cause a variance and that sort of thing. But all in all, it's been a very favorable decision, and uh, NASBA is in such a better place to be able to do what they need to do and react to IT needs as they need them rather than everything being put on the back burner because they just have a certain allotted amount amount of people available. They've got this IT firm and that has the bandwidth if they need to do several projects at one time they can. And so that's been a very favorable um, uh, decision, although it's created a negative variance. Um, then we also had the fund manager that presented um, to us that manages the, the uh, funds, the investment funds for NASPA. And that was very informative uh, and very good. That guy was very impressive. I'm trying to think of his name. I think it was Grace. I think it's Greystone Capital is the is the fund manager. Um, and then uh, the only really big, I guess, big change that we discussed was um, in the past uh, when Ken Bush Bishop came to NASBA, there was not a lot of uh, there was not a lot of investment funds, you know, put away for if something needed to be done or whatever. And um, so he kind of, he implemented that there was a certain amount of money each year that went toward that, that they had to put money back in the investment funds. Well, they've kind of come to a place, a plateau, where they feel like it's at a safe level. And so uh, between the investment committee and the administration and finance committee, we're working toward not having that be a mandatory <clears throat> uh, shelving of money anymore. We'll want to have NASBA, Ken Bishop, and Colleen want to have uh, funds available to be able to meet the needs of state boards instead of just having a mandatory amount that's you know socked away. So um, I thought that was a very positive thing, and, and they've really worked hard to reach that goal. Um, to be able to have a, a level of safety and, and now go forward with being able to even be able to do even more for the boards. And um, again, um, um, Michael Bryant um, and his staff do an incredible job of presenting the financial in information and um, they say they have a tough audience to cater to because, you know, they're they're the accountants presenting to the accountants. So um, anyway, it was a, a nice meeting, very informative, and uh, well worth the time. So. I am. It's the uh, Examination Review Board, ERB, and this is a board that looks at the policies and procedures that the AICPA, NASBA, and Prometrics has in place to ensure that the CPA exam can be relied on. Um, so we met several times uh, this year and did planning for this review. We've completed pretty much all the field work for the review and we're going to be meeting 
actually next week, I think it is, to do the final approval of the report, and then the uh, report will be presented at the regional meetings in uh, June. Western meeting as well. So. Sir, you are also on the audit committee? I am. <clears throat> and actually, the audit committee is meeting this week here in Nashville, but I chose this meeting over that meeting. So, mm -hmm. But it's just a planning meeting, so I figured since this is more than just a planning meeting, I would come to this. But anyway, um, the year end for NASBA is June, so the audit's not started yet. Most of the work on this committee <clears throat> happens in the fall uh, where we review the financials and the audit. Oh, it'll be cranking up soon, but not much going on right now other than I would like to also say uh, Wendy, Wendy invited all of us to participate in these Board of Examiners conference calls, and I, I listened in on one. I, the first time I ever did that, I told Wendy I didn't know I wasn't supposed to talk. So <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting there listening and commenting on things, and I'm wondering why nobody was talking back, talking back with me. But <laughs> <laughs> I learned on this one just to sit there and listen. Felt like you were at home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was interesting because some of the things that some of the other, others have talked about, about the exam participation being down, it's, it was interesting, and I, I won't take long, but just a couple of things they brought out. Some of the reasons that they feel that the exam candidates are down are, are kind of interesting. They say in a, in a booming economy that fewer people take the exam because they can find a job uh, in industry easier, and the jobs in industry are actually higher than the starting salaries in public accounting right now, so there's not as much pressure to take the exam uh, and pass it. Uh, they're also finding that people are not retesting as much as lesser economy because they take it one time and fail and they say, hey, what the heck, I'll just go get a job over here outside of public accounting. Um, so that's what they do. And then um, lesser candidates also because of the, the growth in the CISA and the CFP and CFA credentials. Uh, so hopefully it will start turning around some uh, when, they, when we see some changes taking but uh, that was kind of interesting some of the reasons they of course all that's nobody knows for sure why numbers are down but those are reasons that that they think they're down we've no, always noticed that there's a there's a balance between finance and accounting so the interest in finance is high when the economy is good yeah. and we don't want to hope for a bad economy but uh, accounting <laughs> goes up in a bad economy. Yeah. And, I, and we definitely see people going from accounting to the data jobs. So um, I think that's related to what you said. Anything else, Larry? No. Uh, Pam, are you on a yes. uh, NASBA committee? Uh, Computer-based testing administration committee. We have not met since the last board meeting. We will be meeting face-to-face -face in Tampa later this month. But it, um, it uh, the, the issues it deals with are the, the more practical issues of the actual testing, but they're very important. So it's been eye-opening to see um, what they deal with, such as um, they, they're dealing with the continuous testing and the implications of how to um, to make that happen and the repercussions of that. Um, I told you last time they talked about things like um, that, that issue with uh, people were sitting down and using what they were, the time they were supposed to be reading the instructions, they were dumping information and, you know, whether that was good or bad. But, but these things are so important to the test takers. And so the fewer hurdles we can put in the paths of people wanting to enter our profession, I think the better. So, so I think it's a very important uh, set of issues to, to try to um, streamline the testing process and make sure it's fair for everybody concerned. Comments or questions for Pam? 
Did I miss anybody? Is there anyone else on the NASBA committee? I didn't give an update on the ALD and um, the CPA Verify program, and I apologize for that. As chairman, we uh, we actually had a call meeting since our last board meeting and discussed um, uh, where we are on our vision project. We've actually set uh, for um, August 8th and 9th to come to Nashville, Tennessee as a committee, and we're going uh, we're gonna to redo our vision project. Um, of course, the CPE audit tool has been updated, and there was some discussion about uh, approaching NASPA to, uh, to talk about updating the ALD. Uh, one of our uh, members, who's also executive director, indicated that he thought the ALD was one of the most valuable tools that, um, that we had at NASPA. Um, and so uh, there, there's a new platform and, and a new language that, that may facilitate some major changes in abilities. And so uh, we're going to get together and talk about those, those items, talk about where we see uh, ALD going in the CPA Verify, and then uh, put together our vision statement and then start talking about the new platform. So that way we can help out the different uh, boards because uh, from what we're understanding, it saves staff a lot of time to have a good, reliable program to, to research with. Thank you. Um, anything else regarding NASBA? I serve on the Compliance Assurance Committee. However, we have not met since the January meeting. Um, the, the purpose of the peer review process across the country at, at the local level and at the national level. Um, the AICPA Peer Review Board did recently meet and made some changes to the handbook as it relates to peer review oversight committees. Of course, we ha don't have one in place at this time for this board, but we have been involved in those changes, and um, the group will be meeting member face-to-face -to, -face okay. to discuss these issues. Thank you. I would just like to say as an observation, we have 50 <coughs> percent of our board is our um, participation in NASBA. And I, I think that's, I think when I came on board, there was zero. So that is very good for our state and for our board all the way around. So I'm, that's awesome. Go team. Good deal. I tell you, we are moving along with our agenda, I think, and uh, we could stop and take a 10, 15-minute break right here and come back, or we can keep moving. What, what do you, what's your pleasure? Take a little break? Just went up to y'all. Let's take a 15 minute break then and <clears throat> come back. Is it our? Yeah. Rats. Better right here. It's better this week than last week. <laughs> <laughs> They're out of session. As, as a, yeah. a fit? A fit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Down to the um, board committee reports, and um, the first committee is licensing. So, Larry, we'll let you present that part to the board. Yes, the uh, licensing committee met yesterday to consider a request from uh, Mr. Kelvin Alt, representing Belmont University. Uh, he had a request to uh, approve a course uh, leadership and ethics in the profession uh, which is their course number ACC 6200 as an accounting education uh, to qualify it for the accounting education requirement which uh, licensee or applicants have to receive at least 30 of 30 semester hours of that uh, type of education uh, after looking at the syllabus and the course requirements and the course description uh, and listening to Mr. Alt uh, present his uh, his argument yesterday, the uh, the committee is recommending that we approve that course uh, to qualify as accounting education, and I'm prepared to make that motion unless anyone has to, has any further discussion. I'll second. Second. Is there any discussion now of, of that motion? Okay. 
say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's the only thing we had going on with our committee yesterday, so we're good. Okay. Thank you, Larry. <clears throat> Down to the enforcement committee, and uh, Gabe, I know you had to be in the car yesterday and attend by phone, and um, Kevin handled the legal report. I don't know, I, would you want him to handle that? I'm happy. If, you did the work yesterday, so I'm happy you do it, but if you'd rather me do it, I've got <laughs> my notes, so it's your, it's your decision, Kevin. Please go ahead. Okay. All right. Well, well, thanks. Well, first of all, thank you, Kevin, for stepping in last minute. I apologize for being held up. Um, the the um, updated recommendations, I guess, from legal counsel on the various uh, topics and cases that we all discussed in depth yesterday are in front of you. As I understand, and I've looked through to confirm, there's only one change uh, from yesterday, and it was the correction of the typo in number 21. Is that correct, legal counsel? That's where we confirmed that it was $1,000 for the um, the recommended uh, settlement amount. That's correct. Number 21 was just changed from 750 to 1000 Great. Thank you. I appreciate that. So um, with that, I would propose we had some pretty good discussion on number 22, and I'm not entirely sure if we want to have that some other discussion around that again. So uh, in case we do, I would suggest that um, I would make a motion to the board that we would recommend the uh, recommendations from legal counsel on numbers 1 through 21 that are on the legal report in front of you today. Got a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Motion is second. Now, is there I, I will need to abstain on number 19. Oh, that's right. Uh, I'm sorry, so Kevin. If we could pull so, yeah, I'm so sorry. So uh, can I make my motion to recommend 1 through 18 on this uh, report before you as recommended by the legal counsel? Wasn't quick enough on the draw second. there. Okay, uh, we have a second, I think. And um, is there any further discussion on any of case items one through eighteen? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And then uh, I'd like to also uh, present number nineteen individually uh, to recognize that uh, Kevin needs to abstain. Um, so I would re make the recommendation to the board as a whole that we would adopt the recommendation for number 19 that was uh, provided by legal counsel and that's included in this report. Second. Uh, got a motion and a second, and um, Kevin, you will be abstaining. Yes, sir. The vote. Okay. Any discussion of the motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, and then um, I would also recommend that for number 20 and 21, uh, the board adopt the recommendation of legal counsel that's included in this report. Second. A motion is second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> and then lastly, um, number 22, again, we may not want to have the discussion now, but we, and Trey kind of briefly mentioned it earlier, but the point was that there's an individual who works in real estate in Tennessee but has a CPA and active license in Virginia. Uh, and I guess the question is, um, uh, was there, I think this was found internally, and was there an issue with this person uh, advertising or at least re recognizing themselves as a CPA though they're not actually practicing or doing the accounting work in Tennessee and as we understand from looking at the statutory and rule definition uh, there doesn't seem to be a problem technically because it include those definitions include that a CPA or certificate holder or the word certificate I mean actually includes a certificate from a different state um, but I guess we had a little bit of a conversation yesterday uh, around this idea that do we do we think there's a change warranted to our rules uh, to prohibit this, uh, or if not, are we okay with this? And then it kind of also delved into this issue that Trey brought up recently where Mississippi and it sounds like Alabama may be looking at individuals who are living in their states uh, but don't aren't licensed in their state and licensed in a different state and trying to do some required action to make them register. Um, happy to move along. The legal counsel recommended we just close this uh, for further study, but just wanted to bring it up in case there was other discussion. I would like to. Um, I, I I will second that we. Or did you make a motion to close? I made a motion. Yeah. Oh, just okay. Okay. Well, I would like to say that in new business that I intend or somebody can bring up the fact that we might need to look take a look at our rules in that area. Okay. Let's, let's yeah. okay. Sounds great. 
a motion. Sure. So my motion, Mr. Chairman, would be that we accept uh, the closure recommendation from legal counsel for number 22 as listed in this report. I'll second it. We've got a motion to second. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. That concludes the enforcement committee report. Um, thank you, Gabe, and um, good report. Okay, that takes us to law and rules, and uh, Gabe, we'll turn that over to you. Thank you. Uh, the first thing that we did, we got an update on the CPE rule status. This has been approved by the Attorney General's office, and we are now waiting on, I believe, the governor's approval, which, because of our administration change, earlier this year there is a hold so I uh, will we'll find out probably in July maybe um, if it has been approved the second item was uh, some proposed rule changes related to the um, continuous testing for the CPA exam and we have been presented with a little more updated red line uh, format for this rule. Maria, do you need to, I, I don't know what we need to do at this point. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just going to read into the record. Um, this is rule 0020-01-0.06. Um, and then you all have the amendments in front of you, so we can adopt those just because we've reviewed yesterday and we have those in writing. There is one um, addition that's not included in your documents. Um, and that is the, one second. So it's a regulatory um, flexibility addendum. It's just kind of required by statute. And because it's not included in the paper documents, if you'll just bear with me, it's about one page of questions that I'm gonna read into the record. Can I ask mm -hmm. you a question yeah. first? Okay, so this is under um, Tennessee Statute 4-5-402 under the rulemaking process. Um, and so it's just the effect of small businesses that this rule might have on small businesses. Um, so the extent to which the rule may overlap, duplicate, or conflict with other federal, state, and local governmental rules, and it does not. Um, the clarity, conciseness, and lack of ambiguity in the rule. The proposed rules are clear, concise, and unambiguous. Efforts to streamline according to the model rules and to promote clarity were undertaken during the drafting of these rules. The establishment of flexible compliance and reporting requirements for small businesses. Small businesses will not be drastically affected by these rules. Allowing separate compliance and reporting requirements would generally not be necessary nor feasible. Um, number four, the establishment of friendly schedules or deadlines for compliance and reporting requirements for small businesses. These rules do not affect the schedules or deadlines for compliance and reporting requirements for small businesses. Number five, the consolidation or simplification of compliance or reporting requirements for small businesses. <coughs> um, again, these rules accommodate small businesses in Tennessee in the most efficient manner. There is no discrepancy in the way that any applicant would be required to pass a CPA examination. Number six, the establishment of performance standards for small businesses as opposed to design or operational standards required in the proposed rule. These rules do not create any new performance standards that are specific to small businesses. And number seven, the unnecessary creation of entry barriers or other effects that stifle entrepreneurial activity, curb innovation, or increase cost, and there are none. Um, <coughs> so at this time, if you guys if you have updated copies of the red line version of the rule um, per our discussion yesterday. If there's any comments or any discussion that you would like to go over, we can do that at this time. And if there aren't any, we can adopt by motion. But. Here we'll entertain a motion that we approve the proposed change in rules as presented. So moved. Second. Motion is second. Um, any further discussion of the document? I just say, just for the record, can we also um, included in that rule is the economic impact statement? Can we also get a motion to approve that? A se do you want a separate motion on that? Oh, a separate. Mm -hmm. Okay, then they can uh, they can finish this out okay. and then get a second. Okay. 
Do, do what, Wendy? Finish you this. Can, you can have discussion and vote this, and then we'll do a separate motion. Okay. Are there any, any discussion regarding the motion that's been made? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> now, we need a separate motion to approve the economic impact statement. Yes, sir, and that's included in the um, document in front of you. Entertain a motion. So moved. Second. <clears throat> motion is second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right. Sorry. Right. Finally, just one more for the record. The regulatory flexibility um, statement that I just read. I can also provide a paper copy um, for you all, but just so you know, it's included when we submit the rule. Um, but we can just get a motion to approve what I read um, as well. Addendum. Addendum. Yes. Did we accept a motion the then to, to approve the regulatory flexibility statement as read? Yes, sir. By legal, by legal counsel. So move. All second. Right. Motion is second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hey, is, that, is that all we need? That's, really? that's all we need for this okay. one. Thank you. Then the um, last thing that was provided Sorry. yesterday was, were the proposed UAA model rules related to peer review. Currently, this is waiting in legal for their review and comments. So perhaps in July, we'll have some discussion about those proposed changes. And that is all, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you, uh, Gay. Um, I think that takes us down to the executive committee and um, on behalf of that committee I would like we, we really had three items of business one was a request from NASBA to use our licensee data uh, the second thing uh, we presented the fiscal year 19 uh, year-to-date financial results and uh, reviewed Wendy's comments and she added verbal comments to those um, I do not see a need to re-present those comments today. I think it was for information only, and so unless some, somebody objects, we'll just, uh, I think everybody was present during the committee meeting yesterday, and so we'll move on. Uh, same thing with the travel report, a very short report, and uh, Wendy added some comments there, and so we won't uh, spend any time this morning on that. Um, the third item, the NASBA request, we do need, and you have in your, um, uh, on your iPad there, um, NASBA's request to use our licensee data. And uh, again, I, I think on behalf of the committee, the, I, I, I want to make a motion that we um, approve NASBA's request and authorize Wendy to sign the document, the written <coughs> document, giving them uh, permission to do that. Wendy, I do, I do believe legal counsel will be adding some, will they be adding some language to this document that uh, the, the, the approval document that Help we need buddy. to sign? Um, what we are going to do is we are actually going to amend our contract. Uh, is that right? Am I saying that right? We're going to amend the contract um, so that these future requests can be done um, at board meetings and we don't have to add addendums to each contract each time this happens so that's kind of a behind the scenes but but yes if we could get your approval today on this one and allow me to sign off on it that would be great on behalf of the, uh, the executive committee I'd like to make a motion that we approve the um, request um, from NASBA to use our licensee data and then we authorize Wendy to sign this document uh, 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 I guess evidencing our approval. So that is a motion. Second, second that motion. Yeah. Okay. Got a motion a second. Is there any further discussion of the motion? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay.
That, um, I think, concludes all of the committee reports. Um, I guess next on our agenda is a legislative update. And uh, Maria, are you going to do that for us? Yes. So there are actually no legislative updates. Um, but Wendy did say that I should mention the Right to Earn a Living Act um, was taken off notice for this session. Um, there is a possibility that it could resurface again next year, but that's un that's uncertain right now. So um, that's about the extent of the update. Okay. Thank you. Is there any old business we need to talk about? I'm not aware of any, but does anyone else? That takes us to new business, and um, I guess the CPE audit, audit tool. Wendy, do you have further comments or something on that? I know you covered or discussed it a lot in your earlier report, but. Jumped ahead and talked about it earlier, but did anybody have a chance to log in or um, take a look at it? I got to log in and uh, actually uploaded a couple of documents, registered a couple of courses, extremely easy. Um, I think NASPA did a great job with it and that uh, there's video that you can actually watch that tells you once you log in how to do each section. Uh, you can actually take the time to individually update everything or you can actually put it on an Excel sheet and upload it and post everything at one, in one moment, uh, which is, is kind of exciting because if, uh, let's say if, if I was going to get it audited instead of, you know, sending everything to the state, I'd probably upload it from Excel and then attach all my documents to prove that I that I got my courses. Um, and it's, uh, uh, I, I think it's an exciting program and just uh, on the back side, on the audit side that I've gotten to see uh, from being on the board, it seems like it's gonna be an excellent tool that's really gonna help uh, when we do audits. Uh, but uh, I haven't uploaded everything. I did have one snafu, because being the geek I am, I wanted to delete all my 2016 uploads that I wasn't gonna use ever. Uh, that, that had been uploaded, so I deleted all that. And then in doing the process, I forgot that when I went back in, um, I didn't check a, there's a box at the bottom you check to, to make sure on your, when you're in your CPE that it's in the right category. I didn't check that, so I got a, a little error message. <laughs> so I had to reach out and say, okay, what did I do wrong? And, um, and they actually called me back and said, hey, uh, you just didn't check that little box at the bottom. I was like, oh, okay. And so I had stopped there. I, I was kind of going to try to get everything uploaded for since I'm going to report at the end of the year that I, that I have in process, but I didn't get it done. But it seems very easy to use, which I like. The, the, the other one uh, before it, this is the next generation. The previous generation was very time consuming, and I just immediately said, I'm not going to spend the time to do this. Uh, so it was, it was very easy to use. What would we have to do as a board to, to make that, I know it's probably in the future, but a requirement, just like we did this Tennessee State Ethics course, we narrowed that down to? Yeah, I think that a future consideration item would be, do you want to require it for those that are audited? Do you want to require it for everybody? Everybody. You know, that type of thing. So. Um, keep in mind requiring for everybody is, you know, you've got large firms that have their own um, systems. So it would be nice to get feedback from someone like Kevin yeah. on is he able to get that data from his system over relatively easily? Like what does that look like before we, we would go to an all or, uh, you know, mandatory for everybody type thing? I think actually what our firm is doing is trying to piggyback on NASBA's work and basically use that as our central registry. Oh, okay. So hopefully it would be compatible, but there may be other firms that are yep. doing other things that, um, you know, that we would have to take into account. I mean, even a firm like Trey's, I don't know what you... I mean, it was, we had a lengthy conversation about this the first time the NASBA tracker came out. So you had a lot of people fearful, yeah. <laughs> so to speak. And, yeah. and you got to think that, that people are going to think this is policing, right? So. You're talking about holding people accountable, so you're going to have some resistance. But uh, I do think it's worth talking about. I, I think our failure rates, again, are, are warranted uh, with heading down this path because it's, what were we, the second highest in the, of the states or something? I mean, something we were, like that, yeah. yeah. I mean, we were, 
incomprehensible to me that we're that high. But um, anyways, it's not going to be easy. Uh, it, 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 it'll just be something we gotta we gotta yeah. work through. So it will just be a conversation, and and if there's you know a motion and approval to do something specific, we would notify licensees of that. One of the things I found interesting is is that it it shows you what state you're licensed in when you immediately go into the system. And if you click on that state, it actually gives you what the requirements are for that state. So our specific requirements were listed. And then when you're finished, uh, I haven't gotten to this point yet, but there, there's a template there that when you're finished, you click compliant, and it'll tell you if you're compliant or not. And it'll compare it to the specific things within our rules that are required. And then if you are, then you just answer two or three different questions, and then it'll come up and say you're compliant immediately on the screen, so that you know the the person filling it out knows immediately whether they're they're, they're okay or not. So it's pretty cool. Andy, are you licensed in another state? I, I was licensed in Florida, but as Trey, <laughs> <laughs> the ethics, I finally said no, I'm not doing this anymore. Uh, but I have a reciprocal in Alabama. So eventually, as other state boards come on, you will be able to track in any state that you, all together in one page, you'll be able to track your various requirements. Mm -hmm. okay, anything else on the CPE audit tool? <coughs> Not unless there's any other comments. bring up under new business at this point the um, yes. issue on state licensing I recommend that the um, law and rules committee undertake um, some type of revision working with legal on tightening up the language about using CPA in the net in their names in businesses when they're not providing accounting or a test work like um, as an example, if they're, um, they own a business of, of a different type, a service business of a different type, but they use the designation CPA, that they be required to um, have a license in Tennessee. Um, May I add that um, in, in your recommendation that, that we let Wendy work with legal uh, oh, Wendy. to come okay. up okay. Uh, with uh, uh, with looking at our rules currently, some suggested changes. Because uh, I, I think if you have a CPA certificate, I think everybody uh, agrees that if you're holding it out in public and putting it on your website, that there's value there. And if, if, you're, if you're stating that, that you have that, that, that you bring something extra to the table that your competitor does not uh, due to your education and, and your passing of the CPA <clears throat> exam. And I, I think that if, if, if we do have people within the state that are holding themselves out um, and that we, we look at the need to maybe say, hey, if you are, that we, you, we need you to have a reciprocal agreement here and, and kind of take a look at that to say, is that what we need? Is that what we don't need? And then bring it back to the board and let us discuss it and take a look at it. And I think that we need to have, they need to come under this board as being accountable to this board um, if they're going to use that designation in our state. I would hope that maybe the recommendation could be a little bit broader um, because it sounds almost like we've made the conclusion already before we've done the study. It seems like we need to study where, where the other states are, where we are in relation to other states, what we want to accomplish. I found um, just in a quick search, I found an article published February of this year in the Journal of Accountancy talking about be careful when you use the, the word, the title CPA. And the author was had moved to Maryland and is a um, recruiter, headhunter, and um, said she learned that in order to use CPA, she held one in Virginia, not in Maryland, she'd have to put all sorts of disclosures on her LinkedIn account and her business card and her website, et cetera. So those are things we haven't talked about. But the whole article is about cautioning people that states are different, and it brings in specifically the inactive category. And that's what I was suggested briefly yesterday, that 
it kind of is the same sort of issue when we when the I wasn't on the board, but when the board made that decision, there was a sentiment that you can't call yourself a CPA if you're not getting the CPE and under the um, authority of the board. You can't just pass the exam, do your initial experience, and boom, you're a CPA. And that did used to be the case in many states. And maybe it still is. I don't even know. But it seems like we need a broader investigation in the current legal environment, which is to be careful about setting up restrictions. Make sure you want them. And so I'm hearing that here's a restriction we want. But I think we need to be careful to put it in context and study it pretty thoroughly. We don't need this in the form of a motion, I don't think, do we? Can we not just, I mean, I, we've had a discussion. It's in our, we'll be in our minutes and, you know, we're asking legal counsel and staff. Is that, okay. Wendy, are you okay with that? Yes. I mean, you, you understand what I, <laughs> We do, do more. Do more. Do, more. <laughs> do you do you want? Um, would it be helpful to have uh, members, some members of the board, to participate in what? You, or I, what do you want? What What's best for for the staff? Um, I don't think so at this point. Okay. I, I think I'll probably come back to you with hopefully some information as well as questions. Okay. Meaning, I if I can do find some more information for you on what other states are doing, what legally seems achievable or the right thing to do, and then maybe even a list of questions in, in the form of hypotheticals to make sure we are in agreement on what you all are looking for. I don't tighten think we up. Meaning, if somebody moves to Tennessee and is working in industry, we need to take that into account. We need to work, you know, we need to take into account, um, you know, people who move here and are working in a public accounting firm. We need to, you know, what kind of work are they performing, that type of thing. So there's a lot, to, this is a pretty big. Yeah. Um, well, I think, I think that's the, uh, we couldn't ask for a better starting point than to kick it off that way. And you just, I think, let us know what you need from us. Mr. Chairman, I have one thing too. I just wanted to let you all know this will be my last board meeting with you. Um, I've extremely and thoroughly enjoyed working with you all over the last seven years. I almost made it to the to the nine year mark, where I had to get booted. But um, in light of uh, the new position, working with the administration, I'm just concerned and afraid that it, some things may come up that I may not be able to participate in meetings. And I think the board and the profession definitely deserve somebody who won't have those distractions and can be here and fully engaged with all of you. But I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I've seen a lot of maturity over the last seven years. And Wendy, with your leadership, it's been phenomenal. Um, and I appreciate all you've done for us uh, and our, our, our work jointly to make sure that our, our legal piece and enforcement piece, though it was pretty trying at times with two hour committee meetings, uh, I think we're in a better place from a consistency standpoint, uniformity standpoint, and predictability standpoint for the profession. But what y'all do is awesome. It's amazing. It's sad that I won't be able to continue working with you, but I appreciate uh, the friendships and with all of you and also the folks who were on the board but have since left since I joined. So thank you all very much. Gabe, I, I have to say, I mean, I, you, you've made a, a really incredible contribution to this board, and I hate to see you go, but thank I you. understand your okay. need to be uh, fully committed to yep. what you're doing um, for our state in your current role, and um, we you will be sorely. It, you, there are big shoes to fill. And uh, thank you, Judy, for saying I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, Judy, that is well said. I mean, I, I thank you immensely for your contributions over the last seven plus years, and. Um, I'm not going to hate to see you go because I'm going with you. <laughs> but, uh, we can get a Cracker we, Barrel next time, I, just me and you. Right? I know the rest of the board will uh, will uh, sorely miss you around here, Gabe. So anyway, any other comments? Uh, just some to be sorely missed. I mean, you do an outstanding job. It's been a pleasure and honor to, to work with you on this board. And and you're so organized and, and bring so much to the table and I'm very excited that you're with the state and in your current capacity and you're representing us and uh, just as we're definitely going to miss you. There were lots of times that all of us would would get into situations <clears throat> you mentioned that long 
late night meeting we had, <laughs> there were lots of situations where we'd all look over at Gabe and <laughs> gauge his reaction to things. And and so I'm I, thinking, man, y'all are in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at me. <laughs> but I, I would echo all the other comments. We, we've all very much respected your knowledge and your professionalism, and just thank you. I, I would totally agree with everything Judy said that, that we, we've all benefited from your advice and, and expertise over the years. Thank you. <clears throat> and I'd also like to, I think this is Casey's last yes. meeting as well, and um, what an honor it's been to. We've got things on a positive note here, so let's <laughs> oh. finish up the, the comments on Gabe. Oh, no, we're good. We're good. Oh, is anybody <laughs> else no, anything? No, no, no more comments on me. No, no. Um, okay. Thank you yeah, for thanks. your expertise and your attention to detail. Yeah very impressive appreciate well, and appreciate has kept that. us out of trouble I'm sure <laughs> oh, yeah. I will let you know that when Lang Wiseman went up to work for the governor that was the one call I made I said whatever you do find a place for Gabe because I appreciate that the state sorely needs people mm -hmm. like you I appreciate Absolutely. that Trey thank you um, very much uh, appreciate it I believe they got the right person so thank you yeah thanks very much I'm going to have to take a little bit of a break in this party and we have got to revisit something. Uh, I'm so sorry. Um, on the rule for continuous testing, we're required to have a roll call vote. Oh, okay. Um, so um, I think, do we need to make um, a motion to rescind the prior? Uh, I'm not the best at Robert's Rules of Order, but do we need and not to? just do a clarification vote of the original vote? I mean, I'm fine with that. I don't know what the proper thing to do is but um, we can do a clarification vote and then a roll have call. to do that on all three pieces or can we just do one roll, roll call? and and we know what the motion was and so we had a motion a second can we just have a roll call then okay if you'll call the okay, roll this is this is I'll just clarify for the record this is um, a motion to approve the <clears throat> revisions to the testing rule to allow for continuous testing. And so uh, we had a motion in a second, and we need a roll call vote. And I'm going to read off the names Casey Stewart. Aye. Gay Moon. Aye. Andy Bonner. Aye. Janet Booker Davis. Aye. Pamela Church. Aye. Larry Elmore. Aye. Kevin Monroe. Aye. Gabe Roberts. Aye. Trey Watkins. Aye. And Judy Weatherby. Aye. Thank you. Um, now back to the, the good good stuff here. Um, Casey, also, we need to thank you for your leadership of this body and your membership in this body, and then more broadly in the profession and the society. Um, you mentioned yesterday that, that uh, this will be your last uh, meeting as well, and, and just the stability and the, just the maturity and the, the, the ability to listen and try to pull everybody together has, has just been outstanding. Thank you. I'd like to say a few words, because um, we've been on this board together for a long time. Um, you were here a year before me. Uh, just so people know, he was appointed by the previous administration from Haslam. So, that transition was a big turnover, and Casey was one of the few people they 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 kept on the on the board, and uh, that says a lot about what they thought of you. Um, I know I had many conversations with some people that, that they were excited you were here. Um, the early days, this meeting today is an anomaly compared to what we started with, because I remember coming on and probably the year that you were here before me. I mean, we'd have two and three hearings every meeting and that went on for about 18 months and so uh, I think uh, due to your leadership and your participation this board is a higher functioning board than it was um, you lead with a very quiet demeanor but a very pointed demeanor uh, which is very appreciated I think you uh, your leadership this past year has been it, it's been great these meetings have run well um, and I think you've done so um, in a, I don't know if sympathetic word is the word, but you, when you look at issues, you look at things differently. Uh, you, you look at the person that's behind the issue, and you try to figure out what's going on. And uh, this board will will forever be in your debt, 
I, I echo what you've done for this profession, your years of service. Nine years is a long time. Uh, your retirement is deserved. Uh, I know you're looking forward to being fully uh, maybe disengaged, but you, you've given a lot to this profession, and the profession thanks you for it. Uh, so thank you for your service. I'd also like to say, Mr. Chairman, I guess the last time I talked that way, um, your approach, what, what Trey said, your balanced approach, what, especially what really sticks with me is when, you know, so we've had some individuals come before us and they may have had some, some difficult personal situations in the past, and you've always been one of the first ones to come in and thank them for being here and really talk to them. And when we discuss whether or not we're going to do something and allow something to happen, you've always taken a very balanced Solomon-esque approach, you know, kind of a very wise approach. And I appreciate that. Your consensus building has been extremely important for us. Um, and I thank you for what you've done. It has been a pleasure and a true honor to be on this board with you. Your calm, steady wisdom is recognized by a lot of people in our profession. And I, for this time. Thanks. I'm going to get all emotional here. <laughs> we need to cut there's, this off. There's a line quick. out the door. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, Casey and I go way back, even before this board. We've known each other professionally over the years, being from East Tennessee, Knoxville, Chattanooga, and so forth. And your your reputation always has just been impeccable. Uh, Pew CPAs and Hazlett, Lewis, and Dieter, your predecessor firm before the merger, uh, have always been friendly competitors, uh, and I always respected the partners there. And I think it was. I came on this board. I knew <clears throat> I knew that Casey was on this board, and it was going to be uh, a good experience. It has been, <clears throat> and I, I echo everything that's been said about your professionalism and your your management style. So thank you very much. Okay. I have to say that I've known Casey for some time, also personally, before I came on this board, and. And he hasn't changed. He's still the same guy. <laughs> and he brought that, that leadership to the board. And it, it's been a, a, a true honor and, uh, to serve with you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, to, uh, for your leadership not only here but also in the profession uh, across the state. Um, you have, you've done so much and helped so many young people in our state uh, in their profession. And, and I also thank you for... Uh, you're uh, getting us involved as a board with NASBA, uh, that, that that leadership is paying off, and, and uh, you can see that the people sitting at the table from when we have reports today, that they're active, they're understanding the issues, and, and, and Tennessee is better off because of that. And I just thank you for your, your leadership and, uh, and all that you have done for the profession. I hate to see you go, but thank you for your nine years. Let me just try to finish this up here quickly um, hope I don't get too emotional <laughs> um, you know throughout my career I've had the um, as, as most of you have had the opportunity and to work with some really intelligent people and uh, really strong-willed people and uh, that's certainly true of this board. I mean, I, I think you are all extremely intelligent and you're very strong-willed about how you feel about something. And uh, it's a challenge and a pleasure to work in that kind of environment. So, uh, you know, I, I, I just appreciate the opportunity to be part of that and work with you. Um, I think one of the biggest improvements we've made is is in our staff, and I, I truly thank you, Wendy and Karen and others, for um, the job you do and the support. So uh, I'm not sure I did too much for the profession. I, I think I was more got, got caught standing in the right place at the right time or something, but uh, I appreciate leadership. all the comments. <laughs> uh, that I'd say it's time for me to go home and listen to her. Before you do that, mm -hmm. I would like to present you with your um, outgoing award here.
you. Okay, let's adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>